Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. It began with the dream. The story of Joseph in Genesis is rich and complex and speaks of God's steadfast love and care for God's people. Even more importantly, as we follow the adventures and misadventures of Joseph, we see God's dreams for God's people coming into reality. This week I plan for us to look at some of those Bible characters we tend to overlook and in fact the ones I plan to look at this week aren't ever given a name of their own in the Bible story. Sometimes tradition and legend have accorded them names but in the Bible they are unnamed. Today we want to look at Potiphar's wife. Let me remind you how we got to this point in Joseph's life. And as I said right away, it began with the dream. If you remember the story of Joseph, you might remember that even as a child, he had dreams that his older brothers would bow down to him. When he told his older brothers these dreams, and when his father gave him a special coat to indicate that Joseph was their father's favorite, this did not go over well with his brothers. So one day when Joseph went out into the fields to check on his brothers who were watching the herds and flocks, his brothers planned to kill him. Instead, it happened that a caravan came along on its way to Egypt and his brothers concocted a plan to get rid of Joseph and get some money at the same time. So they sold Joseph, their brother, to the caravan to be sold as a slave in Egypt. Goodbye and good riddance, they thought. They knew they would never see that uppity brother again. But God was with Joseph. And when the caravan got to Egypt, Joseph was sold to an officer of the Pharaoh named Potiphar. It turned out that Joseph did well. And it wasn't long before Potiphar had the, mag the management of the whole household under Joseph's responsibility. And that's when we come up on some of the most important questions posed by this episode. How does Joseph fare in Egypt? Or better put, what happens to the dreamer in the face of the Egyptian empire? Now, we know that Joseph is potent. He's full of power from God. But then enters the person we know only as Potiphar's wife. She's never given a name of her own, and she senses his potency in a different area. The truth of Joseph and her view of Joseph are totally at odds, and as such they stand as symbols of Israel and Egypt. And part of the point is that Israel concedes nothing to the empire. The Bible points out that Joseph was handsome, and Potiphar's wife seeks to seduce him. It was true then, and it's true now, that those in power often think the regular rules and norms of society don't apply to them. So Potiphar's wife thinks it's okay to sleep around. Joseph, however, knows differently. In the end, she grasps at Joseph, but fails to touch him, and is left holding only his robe. She is left empty-handed, and Joseph still has his inner power. You see, clothes don't make the man. Dreams do. She reverses the tables and accuses Joseph of trying to seduce her, and Joseph is removed from his position and thrown in jail. But, but the dream has not been lost or accommodated. Now you might know what happens in the rest of the story, how Joseph being in jail leads to his opportunity to interpret one of the Pharaoh's dreams, and how he saves the nation from famine, and how he's put over the whole nation, and eventually how his brothers come and kneel before him just like he dreamed as a boy. But let's get back to Potiphar's wife, because there are some things we can learn from her and her story. First, Joseph succeeds because God was with him. He still faces trouble and risk, but exactly when the imperial world thinks it controls things, 
Joseph shows that it is God who is in control. God is the causative force, and this theme will be played out over and over and over in the Bible. And even in the story of Jesus, as those in power and authority think they have things, have thwarted the plan of God by killing Jesus, only to find out that they weren't really in charge after all. We also learn something about God here too. The way of God is the way of one who gives gifts, evokes and fulfills dreams, summons and saves, prepares tables, and lets cups run over. This story teaches us about the life of faith in the world. Life is full of risk, but life can be lived confidently in God. Real life and real faith are lived together, sandwiched by God. What that means is that no matter what happens to us, we are held by God. Now that's a dream come true. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.